Okay, the uh, Public Safety Committee July 13th meeting will come to order. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Jeffrey Roy. Present. Alderwoman Howard. Alderwoman Tamika Hubbard. Alderman Muhammad. Alderwoman Pam Boyd. Alderwoman Shamika Clark Hubbard. Here. Chairman Vaccaro. Present. And I know Pam Boyd somewhere, Alderwoman Pam Boyd. Uh, Alderman. Have, somehow she might have got herself cut off, but I know she's here. Okay. Alderwoman Howard. Alderwoman Tamika Hubbard. Alderman Muhammad. Alderwoman Pam Boyd. You know, we, we let's see here. Um, can you resend her a link? Maybe somehow she got cut off. Uh, we do need, we do need her because we want to have a quorum. I will call her also. Please, yes. She was just on a second ago. So we'll, we'll hold on till we get at least one more person. Um, okay. Um, you back on? Did you get him back on? She's she's working. Get back on right now. Okay, let's let's give her a minute or two because we need it for the quorum. We also need it for approval of the minutes, and um, well, I guess there you are. There she is. Yeah. I'm sorry. I got knocked off. I don't know what happened. <laughs> uh, take well, it happens. Yeah. All the I'm woman here. boy. Okay. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're so Alderman Jesse Todd's not here, so we're not going to do that. We're going to skip over that for now. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, yes, the, the assistant clerk needs to give you the number of how many people are here. Oh yes, Ned, and I got to. I know I'm ahead of myself. I'm sorry. We have four present. We have quorum. Okay, and. Um, We'll hold excused all the minutes to the end. Approval of minutes of the uh, Thursday, July 9th meeting. We need a motion. I move that we accept the July 9th meet, meeting. I'll, I'll second that just to move things along. Uh, Alderman Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Jeffrey Boyd. Aye. Alderman Howard. Alderwoman Tamika Hubbard, Alderman Muhammad, Alderwoman Pam Boyd. Present. Here. Uh, I think it's an eye. It's for the eye. Right. It's <laughs> close. Alderwoman <laughs> Clark Hubbard. Aye. Chairman Vaccaro. Aye. We have four eyes. Okay, so what I think, uh, I'm just, does any, has, has, have all the committee members had a chance to look at board bill number 95 yet? And we can leave everybody's mics open, even the guest speakers. Just, we, we, can, we don't have to, I don't want to play the mic thing, so un, unmute everybody's mics. Include, including, yes, please. Um, and I don't even care if we unmute the guests too, I'm fine. They're, I've, I've, I've seen them before, they're pretty, uh, they don't get very rowdy. Um, so, well, now you might, maybe a little. So as, as the committee members, we're gonna go over this, but has everybody had a chance to look over it? A little bit. So say, and we're gonna, we're gonna kind of look at this. Uh, at my hopes, like I said, I, 
I want to get this passed out so we can look at it tomorrow. So all the one rights, do you want to go ahead and give us just a Absolutely. quick overview of what we got going on? Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee for hearing Board Bill 95. Um, this was previously Board Bill 94 in front of you last session, so there has been quite a bit of uh, talk about, about this bill going forward, and I appreciate uh, the support of all of the co-sponsors on this and want to um, specifically thank um, all, well, former alderman and current clerk Terry Kennedy for starting this process um, for civilian oversight over surveillance. Um, back when he was an alderman and alderman John Collins Muhammad for the immense amount of work that he did last session on this bill as well. Um, so we're here to, you know, as a, as a group of folks to try to go ahead and get this done. Um, basically, what we're asking is for uh, there to be in the city of St. Louis civilian oversight um, of any of our privacy technology, our surveillance technology that is uh, that is out there right now and that could be coming in the future. Um, there are a number of cities that have gone ahead and done this process, have, have created you know, a citizen committee and then a review process that would come through the legislative body of the cities, um, just so that we know what technology is out there, what is it being used for, partially because it's a privacy concern and also because it's a fiscal concern. Um, what are, you know, what are we spending our money on? What are we choosing to, to expend vast amounts of money on? And is it working, right? Is it working to, to any number of outcomes that we've set in front of it? You know, some of that is, um, you know, I, I have heard trash collection and, and dumping issues, but also um, solving crimes and prevention of crimes. Um, and all of the things that, that surveillance technology has promised uh, to bring about. So are those things working? And what are the potential disparate impacts that come from the use of surveillance technology? So are we disproportionately impacting yet again, black and brown people in the city of St. Louis because of where our cameras are placed or how they're being used? Um, and these are this bill uh, presents us with the ability to have, have a real grasp on what it is that we're dealing with in the city of St. Louis, who it's impacting and whether or not it's working. So um, with that, I would love to invite my first guest, um, Alicia Hernandez with the ACLU to give some comments on the bill. Um, and then uh, Sarah Baker also with the ACLU has some more comments and, and there we all three will be here for questions from the committee um, as, uh, as we go forward. So. It, it, it go, you go for how we want to do it, so. Okay, oh, great. If we could have Miss Alicia uh, Hernandez go first, that would be great, thank you. Thank you. Um, honorable members of the Public Safety Committee and Board of Aldermen, thank you for allowing me to present testimony today. Um, as Annie mentioned, my name is Alicia Hernandez. I'm a community organizer with the ACLU of Missouri. The ACLU of Missouri defends civil liberties and the principles of equality and justice in Missouri. We do this through litigation, legislative, and public education programs. We have over 15,000 members statewide. We are also members of the Privacy Watch Coalition this coalition includes organizations as, such as Amnesty International, the St. Louis Group, Coalition Against Police Crimes and Repression, the National Lawyers Guild, St. Louis Chapter, and the Organization for Black Struggle. We believe that Board Bill 95 upholds the constitutional right to privacy, and we strongly support its passage. Um, as a resident of St. Louis and of the United States, you have the right to zones of privacy that should not be penetrated by government intrusion. Uh, in, the, in the event that the government needs access, uh, the route is simple. You got to get a warrant. Um, unfortunately, since the launch of the Real-Time Crime Center back in 2015, St. Louis's embrace of surveillance technologies uh, has felt more like a, a runaway train. There is no existing oversight uh, and no agreed upon framework for which uses of surveillance technology, uh, which are permissible and which are not. Uh, Board Bill 95 would change that. Board Bill 95 establishes a process for the Board of Aldermen to set a citywide policy on surveillance technology. And it also requires an annual review to ensure that technology in use is being res used responsibly and with respect for civil liberties. Without Board Bill 95, the, 1, 000, the over 1,000 cameras that are currently watching residents 24 seven uh, do so relative impunity. Without Board Bill 95, data practices related to the Real-Time Crime Center, which places officers behind computers watching cameras placed throughout our communities 365 days a year, lack safeguards and clarity. The same goes for Stingray devices, which are used to track locations via cell, phone, cell phones 
and they can potentially intercept communications of thousands of mobile phones, uh, the users, at a time. The same would go for drone technology uh, this, that this body recently approved. As it stands, the acquisitions of surveillance technology occurs through a public-private partnership without authorization of this democratically elected board. Uh, it is the la this landscape that Board Bill 95 seeks to shape. So without question, St. Louis must work to ensure the safety of its residents. However, we cannot presume to do so when we do not measure the effectiveness of our safety measures, including surveillance technology. Board Bill 95 requires an annual report on the outcomes of surveillance technology. It allows you to determine with transparency if this is a good use of our funds, if it is impermissibly, if it impermissibly strips away the rights of specific communities. Board Bill 95 requires entities using surveillance technology to have a plan for how it will be used, how data will be collected, um, and how it will be secured. Last session, this body passed a resolution requiring an audit of surveillance technology use in St. Louis. A one-time audit is insufficient to answer today's most pressing civil liberties concerned, and indeed the final product showed substantial gaps in the city's oversight. Uh, we should be able to answer if over time this technology is being used to target black residents in St. Louis, despite annual data which shows that black residents are less likely to have contraband. We should know if technology we use has the potential to violate the privacy rights of individuals not suspected of a crime. If so, we should be clear on what are we doing to evaluate and curb that risk. Passing Board Bill 95 makes a long lasting commitment to transparency that keeps pace with technological advances. It acknowledges the city's legacy of racial inequity and promises study, analysis, and change rather than amplification of notorious inequitable practices. Board Bill 95 places community first, places the community through its elected representatives at the helm of decisions that uniquely impact their liberty. If Board Bill 95 is passed, St. Louis will join more than 15 other cities, including cities like Nashville and Oakland, who have passed similar surveillance measures already. I appreciate your consideration for this legislation, and I look forward to answering any questions you may have later. Thank you. Thank you. Alderwoman Rice. Okay, I think um, if Sarah Baker also has some comments, otherwise we can move to, to questions when she's done. Yes, thank you, Alderwoman Rice. I'll be very brief. I just have three things I want to emphasize for the committee. The first is that Board Bill 95 doesn't take any tools out of the toolbox. If this community still wants to use surveillance technology, it absolutely can. All this is doing is putting in some common sense safeguards and regulations so that going forward, it's done in an equitable way and in a way that's measured. Second, this is going to help you watch your dollars and cents. I think as both Alicia and Alderwoman Rice stated, we should know if our surveillance systems are actually effective before we put more of the city's budget to it. And in the past three years, we've spent nearly $4 million on surveillance technology. And I think it's important to know if that's working or not. And then third, I would emphasize that this legislation is needed today as this body considers things like drones over the city of St. Louis um, and other types of surveillance technology. But it's also important for tomorrow because we don't know what the technological future is for Missouri or for our nation. And if we can put in frameworks that make the process accessible and make it fair and safe for all, I think we can go a long way to protecting St. Louis in the future when it comes to surveillance technology. And that's all I'll add. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, I'll go down the list. Vice Chairman Boyd, do you have any questions or comments on this? Um, oh. Oh, you might be on two things at the same time. I was multitasking. Um, I was reading through some of the language and I was curious on page four. So when it talks about the um, the advisory committee, um, who, who, who would be allowed to be on the advisory committee? Have we defined the qualifications for somebody to participate on the advisory committee? So as it as it reads in the bill, um, 
Priya, the director of the Civil Rights Enforcement Agency, is in charge of putting that committee together, and it has to be at least 50% residents of the city of St. Louis and not employed by the residents, or not employed by the city of St. Louis. So it's a pretty broad um, descriptor of who needs to be involved there, um, but it is within within Crea's purview uh, to choose those, um, making sure that, that it is not just stacked with employees of public safety or employees of the right. city of St. Louis. Sure, and I can certainly appreciate that. However, I, I, I guess I, I'm a little concerned about um, advisory committee being made up of just 50%. I would think if this is our city, then it should be our residents that are participating in making policy for our city and not people that live in St. Clair County or St. Louis County or different counties or trying to shape our own government because these are people if you can't vote in the city of st louis then maybe um we should really focus on people who have a can make a significant impact in the city of st louis and i understand that sometimes we may need some actual experts you know so we reach out to universities and maybe need expertise from some of those policy makers or uh, researchers at universities so i'm I can kind of understand that and maybe we don't have as many that live in the city of st louis but i don't think uh 50 i think that's a low bar as far as the participation uh, as an advisor members, I would want to see that higher um, without trying to exclude good experts um, that can help us manage that particular process. Um, I'm also curious as to if we were here to hear testimony today from the director of CREA, as well as the public safety director, as well as uh, Dr. Robert Gaskell, who does over technology for the city of St. Louis, as well as the police chief. I think it's important to have conversation and dialogue from those entities that will be most uh, impacted and who can probably shed more light on some of this subject matter. So will we be, uh, all women rights, will we be hearing from those individuals today? So uh, the chief was not able to be here today. Um, Alderman Vaccaro had requested that he be present uh, for this. The, the bill was significant, well, was heard very thoroughly in front mm -hmm. of uh, your committee last session with input from uh, the director of public safety and the police chief. If I, I was going back and watching videos from last session. So there is, there are no substantive different dis sorry, differences in this bill as uh, it was presented to you last session. So um, at this point, we're, I think we've, we've done a lot of listening to those folks and we have the audit in hand that uh, the chief technology officer handed over um, and we can see the deficiencies in that plan uh, or in that audit that this, this plan can, um, can work with. So I did inform um, the director of CREA that we were having this, this hearing today as well. And he might be, on, I don't, I don't see him on the uh, attendees list, but he is aware that the committee is happening today and he is supportive of these efforts. Well, I would just think it would be um, part of our due diligence to include them during this public hearing. And the reason I say that is I respect the fact that this bill was heard a year ago and there's been quite a bit of testimony. But as I talk about other bills that have been before us, like we talked last week about the resolution that has to do with surveillance technology and um, I was opposed in the question about why can't we just explore? Um, because I think if we all work together, we can maybe find some common ground. Um, but certainly there were members of the committee that were not interested in exploring that whatsoever. It was kind of like um, all or nothing. And I would hope that from a year ago that the police chief, the public safety director, may have found ways to be you know, more receptive to this process. And without having them appear before us, I'm, I'm a little concerned and have a little trepidation about wanting to vote for this today without hearing updated testimony from them. Because I don't think it's fair that um, because we heard them a year ago that they may not have made movement on the continuum in the direction that you would want to support. Um, sure. and, and if we're going to do our due diligence on this, I would, you know, I, I, I just can't support this bill when we don't have entities that are directly impacted um, by this testifying before us. I just think that's only fair. Would you not agree? Well, I would say that they, uh, all of those entities that you mentioned had no hesitation in showing up for committee meetings last fall when this was heard in front of your committee. And the fact that they have not engaged at all in this process, I think is more of a, um, 
a more of a statement uh, that they are not as opposed to this as they were in the past. If they had, if they wanted to testify today, they they absolutely could have. Um, but we did this audit that we received. Um, I'm think that you all got it in your email. It says that it was published in February, but I had not seen a copy and the chairman of this committee had not seen a copy of the audit until earlier this spring uh, when we when we asked for it to be sent out to the whole of the Board of Aldermen. So we have heard from the administration recently on this, um, the chief technology officer and this audit um, within the last couple of months. And so I, I don't think that anything has substantively changed since the time we got that audit. Um, and like I said, the bill does cover a number of gaps in that audit that were identified. And, and how do you feel about the audit? I, I think that it was a decent start. I think that there were a number of holes, um, specifically around which, which types of partner agencies that we're, we're potentially sharing our information with um there oh I've, I've got kind of a, a whole list of things that are, are a little more vague than we would want them to mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. um that would when when a plan would come in front of the board of aldermen public safety committee you would get far more detail um about about what's going on here and what type of th there's no real information around quantifying what what type of data they were getting back so um there's a lot of there's a lot of quantifying information that i would still want um it was it was a bit vague. Okay, so let me ask you this. Do you think it would be helpful if we would have had a presentation of the audit presented to the Board of Aldermen or the Public Safety Committee? You know, well, because that, that's a precept to what you're trying to do, right? Well, not necessarily. So last year, when this was heard in front of you in October, when Alderman Collins Muhammad brought this in front of you, he was immediately opposed by the Chief Technology Officer who said, hey, I'm, I'm working on this audit, um, but the Board of Aldermen uh, requested that he produce an audit in September. Right. Um, Alderman Muhammad presented the bill to you in October, at which time uh, Robert Gaskell Cummins asked for more time. At mm -hmm. that point, even, he asked for 30 days more, and even in, within 30 days, the city still had not responded with an audit to your committee. So this audit was produced in February um, and not even given to you as a committee until potentially this spring when we requested it again. Um, so I think they had they had more than enough opportunity to come in front of this committee um, to explain themselves and to explain the audit to you themselves. Right. And, and sometimes people don't come to the committee hearings for whatever reasons, but I would think it, it would be important to me that I hear from them and that they are summoned to appear before the committee because it's important for me to make the best decision for my constituents that I want to hear an updated opinion of where they are. And maybe they're in the same place they were in October, you know, but at least I would think that um, I'm doing my due diligence to ensure that I have all the current information before me. Sure. Um, so I, I would re I would request yeah. that um, I want to see hear from all four from the police chief, uh, Dr. Gaskell, the public safety director, and the director of CREA, especially since the director of CREA is going to be charged with um, developing this report. I would like to have some conversation with him, being Mr. Charles Bryson. Um, this speaks to the same type of language that I had some exception with, with the close the workhouse bill, because there's a deadline been put on staff. And I want to make sure that staff is comfortable with being able to meet these deadlines. I don't think it's fair that, you know, we just come up with these dates and I'm not suggesting they were arbitrary. They could be very reasonable dates, but I would like to be able to, you know, have conversation with the person in charge of carrying out this mission to ensure that it's reasonable. Because like I said before on, on, on the close the workhouse bill, um, if that's not a responsible date to be able to get that report as it's been placed in that board bill, then I would be seeking to amend it to extend, extend the time. Um, and I certainly appreciate all the work that's gone into this. And we did have some lengthy discussions about this um, last year, but uh, this is a new year. And um, people may have different thoughts about this process today that they didn't have back then. That's, that's all I'm saying. And so... I certainly want to have that conversation on the record, you know, as part of uh, this more updated bill. So I, I thank you for all the hard work you've put into it. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to moving forward with this and having more conversation. No further questions. So, um, Alderwoman Howard, did you make it on yet? I, I do see Alderman, uh, let's see, we got Tamika, Alderwoman Tamika Hubbard. Are you out there? 
I don't see her on the list. I do see Alderman John Collins Muhammad on the list, that he's here with us somewhere. Alderman Muhammad, are you out there? I, I, I am, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, I have no questions or comments for the sponsor. Okay. okay. Um, Alderman Pam, Pam Boyd? Yes, Mr. Uh, Chair, I have no questions for the sponsor at this time. Okay. Uh, Alderwoman Shameen Clark Hubbard. No questions, thank you. No questions. Um, I, I guess I guess uh, similar maybe have some, you know, some concerns, but... Sure. Mr. Chairman, can I speak to a couple of things that um, I was going to say? We did we did ask the chief if he could come today. He could, right. He couldn't. Right. But, right. but we, we can go down. I noticed that, and and, and and certainly you can. I do notice that uh, Alder Woman Grass is with us. Uh, Alder, Alder Woman Gracias. Christina Gracias is with us. If any of the other Alder Women want to pop up, and, and I think Alder Woman Pam Boy, do you have a question? Yeah, uh, for the sponsor, uh, I'm asking, and I apologize because I'm bouncing back and forth, but this ordinance is going to uh, be set forth if we pro uh, move forward on the uh, surveillance that we were talking about before, mm -hmm. that uh, Tom, uh, the 16th Ward Alderman had before us. Yeah, so this would, that would be another piece of surveillance technology that would be encompassed by this bill. Um, timing as far as uh, when, a, when a plan from, you know, on that specific piece of technology would have to come in front of us depends on the timing of when uh, the mayor's office would even consider that contract with persistent surveillance um, and when this ordinance would be passed. So there, there are pieces of the bill that talk about existing plans, existing surveillance technology um, has 180 days to come in front of the committee. Any new technology submits a plan before they roll out. So it depends on the timing of the passage of this bill versus um, when, when the mayor's office may or may not uh, be interested in contracting with the um, aerial surveillance. Okay, and so if they, um, in regards to the surveillance, and I apologize because you did say before I had got this pulled from somewhere else that you were looking at a committee, a, a so, civilian oversight committee. Well, there's an advisory committee under the Civil okay. Rights Enforcement Agency. Yeah, that they would form to help create the the technology use plan. So there's a there's a couple steps in the bill. One of which is creating a plan for the city of St. Louis. And then that is what CREA would use to evaluate any um, individual individual types of surveillance technology would, if, they were in, um, if they were in compliance with that plan. So that's what the committee does, is really create those guidelines for the city of St. Louis um, to, to check, sort of have some, have some things that we say, these are our community values and this is what we want our technology to be in line with. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Um, and I, Alderman Rice, you, if you want to go ahead now, but otherwise I'd go down the list here. Uh, Alderman Vicki Grass, I, I, I see you on the list of here. Did, did, uh, I'm just listening and learning. Thank you. Okay, you don't know, no questions about this or anything? No, sir. Thank you, though. Okay. Um, what about all the women, Christine and Gracias? No, thanks for asking, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, Alderman Dan Gunther? No questions, just uh, here for support. Okay. Um, I think I got everyone, so uh, I, I guess... I, uh, it does look like Alderman Boyd has another question. If yeah, I have a yeah, he, he's now. vice chairman, so certainly yes, please. Um, Alderman Rice, um, is this an ad hoc advisory committee, or would they be appointed by the mayor? So this establishes the authority to create 
um, the committee in, fully in the Civil Rights Enforcement Agency. So this is not, these are not mayoral appointments. Okay. All right. But, but Charles Bryson, the head of that is. Right. Well, Char I mean, the, the Civil Rights Enforcement Agency is within the Public Safety Department. Um, so there, there's a hierarchy that comes down there. But no, these are not, these are not appointments that would come from the mayor's office. Okay, um, let me ask you this. Um, I know off time we, we do these bills and we put them out there and we call for hearings, but maybe there's a conflict with people that may be impacted with the bill to appear. I'm not sure what the, um, Patri uh, the police chief story is right now or anybody else, but would you be opposed to holding the bill until we can get everybody to the table to discuss this bill? I appreciate what you're asking, but we really have been over and over this bill a number of times. And I think there were at least three times that the bill came in front of public safety last year. Um, and like I said, there are no substantive changes. Uh, the Civil Rights Enforcement Agency is thoroughly on board. And I, I, I would go under oath to say that, that I, I did speak with Mr. Bryson before I came over here. I'm not, I'm not just trying to posture on that. They're, right. they're ready to go and we have the information that we need. And so I, I really think that um, because because the essence of the bill is also that the Public Safety Committee continues to be directly involved in this mm -hmm. process um, for all of these surveillance technologies. I think I think that we're at the point where we should we should try to move this forward. Yeah, and I, and that's one thing about the bill that I certainly appreciate. So I'm glad you you gave more authority um, to the Public Safety Committee, and this just wouldn't go out there and action be taken, and we just have to reel somebody in. We're the uh, legislative so body for the city I, of St. Louis, and we should I, use those authorities. I like that piece of it a lot. Uh, so that's the safety net. Uh, but again, it's just that, um, I mean, I'm not questioning the fidelity of what you're saying, but uh, I just would prefer to hear from them directly on what their current position is on the bill. And so I would be re respectively asking um, the chairman of the committee to hold the bill until we can get a, a date where everybody, all the stakeholders um, can come together and, and make a good decision on this bill. Mm -mm. Well, no, what, well, what I'd like to do is pull the committee, because I, I did do my word that I would pass this out, but <clears throat> I'm only one vote, and I don't know how I'll vote on the floor. Let me kind of pull this might, but rather than kill it, in, just in case, and we may want to pull the committee because if we're, if we're Mr. Committee, Chairman, I'm, with all due respect, I'm not saying kill the bill. There's a lot of great merit oh, no, in this oh, no, bill. No, 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 I'm saying if we vote, mm -hmm. we don't have the votes. They're I mean, trying to. They want to hold. See, the only one. <laughs> So, so what, what, I, what I was saying was if, 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 if the votes come up, no, it, it would kill the bill. If the majority of the committee wants to hold it, I don't, I, I don't know how everybody's going to vote. I, mean, I don't want to kill the bill. You know, no, no, I no, just no, want to make sure that I hear from all the stakeholders out, you know, out of fairness. No, I, I, I understand. But if you guys want to vote on a bill, that's more, I'm more that you're the chairman and I will make my one vote as everybody would make their one vote. I, that's just, it's just my opinion. That's what I love about um, the process is that we all have a voice. So no, I know. the only reason that public discourse is good. I don't know how I'm going to be on the floor. There's things in here I'm concerned about too, but my, my chairman, word would say we questions. can't sit along. I would, but. Mr. Chairman, if you have more questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. I, you know, I, I mean, Jeffrey Pye, Alderman Boyd, I don't, I'm so just calling by by the first name, I'm sorry. But all the, Alderman Boyd brings up a lot of good points. But my word has to be worth something. So I don't know where I'll be on the floor, but I did say that I would vote to get this out of committee, and I will. I appreciate that. Um, had I would have talked to the vice chairman prior, I probably would have said, well, Let's, you know, but uh, if you want, we'll take a vote. If you want me to poll the committee. I'll I would, committee. I, Mr. Chairman, I, I think that the, the Public Safety Committee has uh, exhausted this conversation at this point, and I'm happy to continue it on the floor, um, but I would love for, to ask for the committee's favorable, favorable consideration of Board Bill 95 today. Okay, does someone want to make a motion or not, or yes, or maybe? I'll move. So we have a motion. Do we have a second on the motion? Second. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Boyd. Present. Alderman Howard. Alderman Hubbard. Alderman Muhammad. He's still here. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Clark Hubbard. Aye. Chairman Bacuero. Aye. Alderman Howard. Alderman Hubbard. Alderman Muhammad. Aye. Four aye votes and one present. Uh, by your vote, we've uh, passed. We're going to move this out to the full board with the due pass recommendation. Uh, and uh, thank you, all the women rights and everyone that was listening in. Uh, we don't, we have yet to see, and I don't see him on the list, uh, Alderman Jesse Todd on his his board bill, although there there is questions on the board bill. Um, I, don't, I don't see a fiscal note in, I'm pretty sure boarding up all the windows in a building must cost something. Uh, I, I can tell you that uh, the public safety director or, or the uh, building commissioner said it would cost a lot, especially on buildings that are really close together. It would take special equipment to be able to board stuff. Um, but the sponsor is not even here. So having said that, uh, unless somebody wants to bring it up for them, I don't see that either. So we'll just kind of skip over that then. And as far as I know, unless there's any other business that any of the members want to talk about. If not, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Anybody? I move, move that we adjourn the safe meeting. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to adjourn. So thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming and, and thanks for uh, the votes. Thank you. <laughs>